How big is your rack? We're gonna show you a lead rack if you're gonna go big walling. Jeremiah's gonna show you his rack, and then I'll show you mine. And let's start off with the standard Yosemite hammer. The classic macro pulley to carry your heavy load. And if you don't want dangly hooks catching on everything, you can just take a bunch of handholds and screw them directly into the wall. That's pretty good. That was good. That was like the seventh take. But uh, we might not be funny, even though we think we are, but we can guarantee that watching these 12 How Not To Big Wall videos, if you've never gone big walling, will help you a little bit, at least. Um, we were wrong about being funny, maybe we're wrong about that. But we're two guys with a lot of gear and love to share what we know. Uh, this is a smaller part of a bigger project called the Big Wall Bible, where you guys can also contribute feedback and we can post in that written material, kind of like the Bolting Bible. And we can keep adding to this knowledge, because once we hit publish on these 12 videos, well, that's the send. That's yep. all you got. I'm Jeremiah Laterno. I'm a math teacher from the Midwest who loves the big wall. Um, I've done eight successful big walls so far and still learning a lot and chasing after this. Yeah. And he spent like five years prepping for your first big yeah. wall. Yeah, I spent five years training for a big wall to finally get confident on it because all I got was a lot of hate mail saying, don't get on the big stone until you're ready. So I took the time to really make sure I knew my stuff before coming out um, and I've had nothing but fun. And I've had uh, <laughs> a very different experience. I lived uh, two and a half hours away from Yosemite my whole life, and when I found the big stone, I fell in love with it, and I kind of threw myself into the deep end. And I made 28 attempts, 10 of them were failures, and 18 of them were successful. So I know how not to do this, mm -hmm. but I have also know enough tricks to get up the wall. And most of that was in the first two videos when it came to preparation and checking weather. So make sure you check out those other videos. Make sure you subscribe to see the rest of this course as we're releasing it once every week. And you can always go down into the Big Wall Bible. Now I'm gonna do my sad plug. So I'm from Are Sioux my Falls. my plug sad? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> okay, <fair. laughs> uh, I'm from Sioux Falls. Uh, we're just a brand new climbing community that's developing this last year. Uh, we've gotten to the point where we decided to pick up some stewardship programs, help develop some crags, and take care of some of our uh, conservation efforts in our area. Um, so what we have been working on is a climbing coalition called the Great Plains Climbing Coalition and right now we are working on fundraising and grants and applying for a lot of our startup fees uh, to be able to start helping out at some of our local crags. Um, so hopefully I'll have more information where you guys can maybe check that out and either sign up for donations or sign up for memberships when we get to that point. Um, cool. but yeah, you have rocks out there? We do, yeah. And um, actually, uh, they're terrible and don't come out to the Midwest because uh, they're awful and horrible and it's super run out and dangerous. So don't come out to the Midwest because we have nothing that you guys can handle. That's okay. I'll be on now, Capitan. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not the hammer you take. No. I'm going to take this pitch, Ryan. Uh, I'm going to talk through what I would wear on a typical pitch that I'm going to be leading. Uh, this is just kind of a arbitrary Yosemite real rack. Uh, obviously you would add uh, whatever you need for that special pitch, but this is what I would typically wear. I'll just do a little spin really quick of what that looks like. But I'm gonna talk pretty much from the bottom and then work my way up. So I'm gonna take this thing off because it is heavy. It's about 25 pounds, we weighed it earlier. So let's start at the bottom here. So at the bottom, what I have is GTXs. Uh, they're pretty much the TX4s, um, but these are just high top versions of them because it's also nice to be when you're in snow to have high tops. The nice thing is they're really firm from the, the stepping and ladders so your feet don't get squished. Most of the time, if it is gonna be primarily all aid climbing with very little free climbing, I wear these. Otherwise, I do lead in my uh, T, uh, TC Pros quite often if I'm gonna to have to do a lot of free moves. Then I go up to my knee pads. Now these are just classic little knee pads that just strap with Velcro. I love these, uh, but they do get hooked a lot underneath it and there is a downside to these but I absolutely love these for when I am uh, belaying as well as having to haul and my knees just rub against the wall. Uh, you don't need them, but they're just not one of my creature comforts and it makes me feel like an aid climber. Okay, moving up to my harness. I'm gonna keep the center strap because I think this is a really important one to talk about right now. This is called the Alfifi. So this is made by uh, Scott Richards. It is a great revolution to the climbing world. It is a adjustable strap here that I can just pull in and it's just a welded hook. And what this does is this goes and attaches to my gear and helps pull me in and keeps me close to the wall. 
um, and it's uh, cinches and it's auto release by hitting a button here and it can be under tension which is really nice. Now I did have to modify it where I added this strap here so then I can actually just clip it back to my harness to keep it attached to me so it's not dangling. So that's what this red cord is and that's always on me and it's very helpful even as a follower. We'll get to that in the following section. All right, so I'm gonna start on the right side of my hip here and I'm just gonna kind of work around what I have. So on my harness, I classically keep all of my draws on me. Now what I have is I have them in sets of three um, and I like to keep them kind of organized in terms of alpine draws versus sport draws. I do like a little bit of both and I somewhere have typically between 12 to 18 depending on the climb that I need. Um, so that's what's there. And then I always make sure to have some double length slings as well. The way I like to rack my double length slings is after they're just classic alpine style, I like to just twist them up and then clip them together um, and then they're nice and short. Less tangles, less opportunities for uh, getting twisted. So I'm going to take all those off, but I keep them a little bit on each side of my hip. How many draws is that? 10 to 18, 12 to 18. Okay. Um, right now I have three, six, uh, nine, um, there typically is um, 12, uh, 15, 17. Cool. Yep, and I think that that does me a pretty good job overall. My hips are now free from my draws. I'm gonna just keep on rotating to the right side. So I have a Yosemite hammer, and I also like a little hammer holder because I don't necessarily like this thing dangling below me. I like to keep kind of organized and there's less chances for extra tangles there. So I'm just gonna keep that on my hip there. My gris gris is always on my right hand side. I'm right-handed, um, so I have my gris gris always on me. My nut tool always on me because I still use that on leads sometimes for redoing placements. And then I bring my cordelette which is for my anchor building. So that's kind of my three essentials there that I use. And then going to the other side of my harness now, then I keep my ATC. Typically don't need that until I'm all done climbing um, for rappels or anything like that. Um, but I like to keep it still accessible. Then I have my lockers, and I like to do my bundles usually in groups of three. But I, I always try to carry at least, I always try to carry at least five lockers with me, um, because then with the one that's on my cordelette, that gives me six lockers to be able to do stuff with. Uh, the other thing I carry on me, which is kind of a controversial thing, I guess maybe a little bit, is I do carry my ascenders on me even on lead. Um, there's often times where I just need to be able to grab onto the rope with something that I can't do with a grigri because. The ascender can just snap on a tight rope, a Grigri can't. I might have a micro traction on me, but this can at least grab the rope when I can't. So I do keep them on me, and then there's less chances for us to uh, kind of drop them as we're trying to hand each other each set of ascenders. If you have a hammer, you should also be bringing a funkness device, and that funkness device is used to be able to get things like pitons out, uh, or even a really stuck nut. Sometimes it can do a good job at getting out. So you bring that with your hammer, uh, and then I also do carry my Nalgene. As we talked in the prepping episode about getting your bottles ready, uh, you can see here that I do have it kind of connected at two points, uh, my noose and then also the plastic strap. I don't just trust the plastic strap. Um, and then I also do make sure that there's uh, duct tape around my water bottle so I always have that accessible. But I like to carry a uh, Nalgene with me with a locker and I always lock it to myself so then it doesn't come off. And then last couple things that's on my body is things like my gloves when I'm having to deal with the rope a lot more. And then the last thing here is all of my survival stuff. So this is my self-rescue stuff on the backside. That's things like a uh, tip lock. I also have things like a nano tracks, um, kind of the same idea. That is definitely uh, unnecessary to have to. I just like to carry those because they're nice. And then the last thing is like my knife because I might need to replace old tat while on lead um, to be able to keep my followers safe. Um, so I always bring that knife with me. Um, and then the last thing is obviously a chalk bag, classic climbing move, uh, I always bring that. So kind of moving up from my hips, I go up to my chest here. A couple things I have is I do like sunglasses once in a while. I don't often have them, um, but it is nice to be able to, if you're looking up and you're on lead, to be able to see if you're climbing the peak sun. Um, other things like walkie-talkies, I do kind of carry with me. And then uh, onto my helmet here, 
I have my helmet with my headlamp attached with charge fresh batteries. So that's that. Let's get to the really good stuff, the real gear point that you really want to look at. All right. Oh, hi, get it? I, am I a cam guy then? Oh. oh. I should have an OnlyFans. So I also bring a set of ladders, and what I really like are my Yates ladders. They're nice and long, um, and there's a, I'll kind of show this in the Big Wall Bible of how you can cinch those together, but they drop down. I think this is a six-step ladder. Um, I really like the Yates one, um, but the big thing I'm really going to recommend is that you have a spreader bar. Um, the spreader bar uh, prevents these things from collapsing as you step higher and higher and higher so your feet don't get pinched as bad. Yes, they're heavier, but like, let's be honest, you're already carrying a lot of gear anyway, so what's, what's a couple extra ounces, whatever. So I like the Yates ladders. Um, yep, so I do two. I don't like three. I think that bringing three is unnecessary and I just have them connected to my daisy so I don't drop them. Is I have on both sides, I have a small set of micro nuts. This includes some of the RFPs and just small nut, uh, nuts just in general. Um, and then I have like my larger set of nuts. Now this is a combination of a lot of different brands, um, but I would highly recommend making sure that you do have a set of offsets on your uh, rack here and maybe a couple different double sizes in offsets as well. But those are my classic uh, passive gear. On to how I rack the front. So I keep about an even 50-50 split of my rack, but on the right side, maybe I'll just show the right side because it's pretty much duplicated on the left side as well, is I have things like my small uh, C3. The C3, what we call the ghost cam because it scares away all the cams for how terrible and scary placements those are. All, those are. I have small things like a black alien, the uh, red uh, C4, or X4, I should say. Uh, another Alien, they're really great for um, really kind of small placements, but truthfully, I don't actually know what is the big deal of the difference between these Aliens and the X4s. To me, they really- <laughs> Aliens uh, are better. Are they though? Yeah, in every way. I would love to hear your guys' comments on what's the biggest difference between these current Aliens and these ones. Then on to my larger cams and like what I think are the more important cams really truthfully um, is a set of totems. So my standard, I really think that everybody should have, let's say triple rack, you have two sets of totems and you have a set of offset, BD offsets, whatever you want to do for your offsets. But totems, the amazing thing is besides for the, the two lobe placement, which is just one side of the, the cam, is also the fact that the, the size profile of them fits really, really well in piton scars as well. So it's kind of a double whammy is both they can hold in placements that other camps can't, as well as they, they can fit into placements that other camps can't. Uh, check out the How Totems Break video um, to check out how they wear and tear because I think that that's a really important aspect to see how does your w gear wear and when do you need to start retiring them. So I do a triple, uh, double set of totems and then a set of offset cams. So there's a black totem, and then I keep uh, three point threes on me. I like three point threes. Point four. Then I have an offset cam kind of in between my point four totem and my point five totem, kind of to fit the difference between those two. Same with a point five totem to a point seven five totem. There's my offset BD, um, and it's always just kind of fit in between those that series. Now, oftentimes I I kind of stop at the the red size totem, um, you don't find those as beneficial uh, because there's not as many totem placements that are worn, oh sorry, piton placements that are worn out where you need to deal with the flare. So that's why I oftentimes now just go to one totem and then one BD of that size, kind of all the way back up. So then I go to my yellow ones, uh, a blue, usually a, a number four and then typically one five gets you up a lot of routes, typically not even a five. So that's kind of what's on the whole right side and it's pretty much duplicated here on the left side as well. So it's on the left side and right side, even split. Then last thing is with the chest harness, what's really nice is it has a couple other top clip-in spots. So that's where I attach my ladders to keep them high and out of the way, as well as things like my cam hooks, my packers, all of that stuff. For instance, I keep all of my uh, specific type of 
gear on a beaner. So all my cam hooks are on a beaner, my peckers are on a beaner. Even, uh, even though I have a tiny pecker, um, it's on its own beaner as well. Um, so everything has its own, including copper heads and rivet hangers, etc. Uh, and then if you can try to keep these in a bag or something, because they do like to catch on things, uh, stay really organized with stuff like this. The last thing with this chest harness to keep in mind here is also that it does come with a pack on the back. And what I keep, keep in there is... How do you access it? You would have to take it off. Oh God. Yeah. Well, I take it off anyways to start hauling anyways. Kind of get a little lighter. In this bag is my uh, three to one and two to one mechanical advantage uh, pulley system that I keep ready to go configured so that I can just pull it out, attach it to it if I realize that the load is heavier than I want it to be. This bag eventually goes into my haul bag later on when my bag gets lighter and lighter and I no longer need this because I'd like to stay to a one-to-one -one haul system. So then this goes back in my haul bag and what goes in that package usually is my wig bags because the higher you get, the more scared you get. So it's nice to have an emergency toilet when you need it. You know you can't really poop when you're scared. It just comes out. <laughs> it's more of I need something to wipe with, uh -huh. really. You know? <laughs> All right, so that is everything that's on my rack and what I typically carry with me when I'm on lead. So, uh, Ryan, ah, man, my walkie's dead. So what happens when you have the X talkie. Oh, hey, look at this. I have a Rocky talkie. Hey, Ryan, uh, off belay. Thanks for the cheesy Rocky talkie plug. Um, seriously, this is a big wall essential. They help sponsor this course, so it's free for you guys. And in the... Oh, stop. I'm so, such in a habit. I, I, you like, can leave it on like the whole week. I know. Yeah, that's Rocky talkie, man. And they even give you a 10% discount if you go to rockytalkie.com slash how not to. These things last for days, even if you forget to turn them off like I did last night. And they're super durable and they're very powerful without needing a license. And it's very relevant for this part of the video where we're gonna talk about what I'm going to lead with. Now, before we start at the bottom and work our way up also, I'm gonna share with you the difference. As you see, I don't have a chest harness. I like to have everything on my hips. And what I end up doing is, because my real estate is very minimal here, I only have three loops on this side, three on this side, and one bigger one in the back. Not my haul loop, but just a gear loop. I can't just put everything horizontal. So I have to go vertical. And so every, let's say, yellow alien is gonna be stacked on its yellow alien, but every piece has its own carabiner, which allows me to have this stack of slings, which also have their own carabiner. And I use these more than I use draws. But let's start down here, where I have the same shoes as Jeremiah, except I don't have the ankle protection because I don't care about my ankles nearly as much as he does. Same with my knees. I don't like how the knee pads rub my knees in the back, so I'd rather have my knees exposed than deal with that the whole time. What I have in my pocket here is the topo for the entire route, folded up in a Ziploc bag in case my leg sweats too much, a spare battery for my headlamp, even though this one also has a fresh, fresh battery. Next is big wall gloves, which I don't want to wear right now, but um, they're nice to have at least these two fingers accessible, even if you have these two fingers uh, covered by normal gloves, if you cut your own. But find the gloves you like. We'll have that in the Big Wall Bible on the best gloves and people's opinions on them. And we look forward to your feedback on what you like. Next, I have Metolius Easy Daisies. And uh, these are not technically personal anchors, but they are very nice to aid with. I'm always clipped into my climbing rope in one way or another, so these are super good enough for what I'm doing. You never wanna fall on a static personal anchor anyways. Now I have cam hooks permanently on here because my next pitch is gonna be finger size cracks where I can go a lot faster if I just cam hook my way up, place a black totem, cam my way up, blue totem, cam my way up. Now I try to avoid pulling these tight each time because that's just a lot of extra motion. So what I'll do is I'll climb my aiders and then I have my sling and carabiner down here, which some people have a Fifi hook. I like the carabiner over a Fifi because a Fifi, if you have slack in it, when you go down a little, it could fall off, you lean back, and it's not there anymore. Um, this is bomber. I know I'm connected to whatever I'm connected to in a bomber way, but if it's not overhanging, I could top step by having this sling on here. But if it is overhanging, 
I can take this carabiner and I can clip directly to the piece and keeps my hips really close as we'll show you in the leading section of the video how that works. But for now, that's what I have in my personal anchors. When it comes to ladders, I made one out of 9 16 webbing where you just take one side and make it looser than the other side so you have a place to step, tie a knot. And I do this for the Lost Aerospire where I'm only gonna climb two pitches in order to rig the slack line on it. However, it's not fun to use, but neither is this one. This has a dedicated side for each foot and I don't always climb straight up normal. So I like the same aiders as Jeremiah because I can put either climb up one or I can go up both in whatever fashion I want. And they're so much more comfortable to stand in. They are a little bit heavier and I only take two because I can just sit on my top day's E and then lift them both up. And when I'm at an anchor, I'll clip them at two separate bolts so they're spread out. Now I clip the second foot loop and this keeps it tidy enough for me to keep on me while I am not using them. So let's start with the gear that's the most fun since I want to be a cam boy. Uh, that sounds actually really bad. Cam guy. Cam, yeah. Yeah, wow. I really screwed that joke up. So all my smaller stuff is going to be on this side. All my bigger stuff is going to be on this side. So I have my three smallest totems, black, blue, and purple. And I'm going to be adding more black and blue totems to my rack. And what I do, as you can see, is I stack them on each other. And if I had four of them, I would just do the same thing. I would go like this, but all the same size. Now you take the top one off and you take it off wrong, off your harness, you're gonna drop them all. So I do gates out and my black one's gonna be separate. And I always make sure that I find the last one and I can pull it off. And if I have two hands, I'll even keep my other hand on it. And I just make sure it's on very well. The problem is if you grab and you're not paying attention like this and you, um, trying to screw this up, you can lose the cam. So you gotta be mindful to grab the lowest uh, piece that you are clipping in a line. So next on this side, I have my offset aliens and you can see an offset alien is where the sling is a different color than the thumb loop. That means two of the lobes are gonna be smaller than the other lobes. Piton scars started as thin cracks and they got wider and wider, wider in this oval shape. And the back of the hole is smaller than the front of the hole. So you put the smaller lobes in the back and actually with the flexibility of these, the soft metal of an alien and the different lobe sizes, they fit really, really well in piton scars. I go from black blue all the way up to the yellow red. And they're all stacked here and I have two of each. The next thing I have on my harness is the micronuts. I have two sets of offset micro nuts and that's depending on the route I'm doing all I typically take on any route now if I'm going to go do some a3 plus a4 stuff I'm going to want to take more than this because if you have a really thin seam for a long ways this is not going to be enough now I'm a little different in the fact that this is the only set of nuts that I take DMM offset nuts and I almost never use them I can go up an entire wall without using nuts because I love my cams Never use them, tried, I would try to climb in either. Yeah. Even though in our brake tests, they actually prove to be stronger most of the time. Next in the back of my three gear loops are free beaners. But on my free beaners, I have rivet hangers. So if there's a bolt without something to clip to it, you clip a wire over the top of it or this removable hanger. And that is not something I need all the time. But if it is, it would already be on my daisy and I'd have two or three of each in case I need to leave one, I still have them. If I know I have a rivet hanger ladder that I gotta climb. It's all dependent on looking at the topo. Next on most routes, I'll just take a grapple hook and a talon hook in case there's a little lip that gets me a little higher or I just can move faster. I love hooks when I can get a solid placement. These can catch on things, but by having just the harness and not a separate part of my body that has to extend up like a chest harness, then this doesn't get snagged nearly as much using my setup. The problem I find with the chest harness is all the gear is hanging over my other gear and it kind of gets hard to access different stuff. The last thing on my three gear loops on this side is a set of lockers. Now, I already have my quad anchor and lockers already ready for the anchor in my back. 
I don't need these technically for anything, which you never know and I like having two or three of them with me. Notice I did not use this third loop. It's my junk drawer. This is where I'll clip my ladder or a piece I know I'm about to use. I'm off center now because I'm heavy on one side. Um, this side is almost a mirror of the other side, except I have my big stuff here. So we'll just start in the front where I have my normal aliens, where the sling and the thumb loop are the same color. And I have two of each because I love them. Then I start my rack with a number one. If I need a 0.75 or 0.5, I have those guys back here. And I love my totems. I love them so much that they almost match the exact same size as a, a red number one Camelot or C4s. Well, I'm dating myself. So I have three of these guys and I have three of all of these because I wanna show you how nice the vertical stacking can be. Number twos, I grab the bottom number two and I have access to it. And I can even put it back. And I have, and I have two number threes. And what's nice is I know how many number threes I have left if I were to take one off. If I have some number threes here and some number threes back here, I'm gonna have a harder time keeping track of it. And just to flex how many number fours I have, I have three number fours behind that. How do you clip to all your gear, you ask? Well, my draws are on this side. I have double length slings here, and I use them for a lot of stuff if I start traversing. Otherwise, I might just clip directly to the cam because it has its own carabiner. Do you clip to the... If you're going straight up, it's pretty easy. Now, this, I stick my finger in, and it's a shoulder length. And if I just clip one strand, it is a double length. And you'll notice I am okay with leaving this loop here, even though it reduces the strength a little bit. I don't care. Whatever I'm clipping to is gonna come out first. Be careful to not do this and clip the middle of that, because if you unclip this, your carabiner is going to fall. So be mindful that you need to make this into a loop. Oh, oh, where? where to go before clipping your other carabiner. And then how I like to twist it is I twist both hands at the same time in order to get this nice and tight. And I clip it on the spine side and it keeps it tidy. Now I only had three of those because my route's not gonna zigzag a lot. Otherwise I'll have two stacks of four on either side of me. Same with the quick draws. I have one quick draw as a Jesus piece that you put on the bolt before you leave the anchor. So you don't pull the, the layer down, but that the rope can go up a little bit before catching you. And then maybe the next bomber piece before I start running stuff out. So I don't use a lot of quick draws because once I start getting higher and higher, I kind of just want to start using these guys. I also have more free beaners with rivet hangers. And a little trick I do have is when I lean over my back sling, sometimes I'll just clip spare beaners. I always know I'll have some extra beaners on these slings that are furthest in the back. And I like that. Wanna take a look at my rear? So what I have here is a ascender, just one. I'm gonna use this to haul, to grab the line and pull through my, wait for it, protraction. I am a one-to-one -one hauler. I don't care what it takes to do one-to-one -one, and we'll show you all the different ways of doing that. I will almost never do a three to one because it takes more than three times as much hauling in order to get that bag up. So I clip this to the highest bolt, clip this to the strand, and I just start pumping. We'll cover that in the other videos, so make sure you subscribe so you see when that comes out. Pro tip, an aluminum quick link in this little hole that's completely useless is great if you wanna just clip your ladder to that and your personal anchor to this and have them separated. Now, like I said before, I have my anchor already put together. The quad anchor is already tied. And if you want to see a quad anchor brake test, it's actually pretty neat. You can use the shelves, you can use the redundant points. Anyways, four lockers, right? Two for where I'm going to connect it and two for how I would connect Jeremiah before he starts coming up to my anchor. So this is all ready to go because I know I need it. Just like you need some swag from HowNotToSwag.com, which is another great reason I don't have a chest harness covering it. Oh, I like to be able to 
have the ability to come down, belay, or rescue, or anything. A Grigri is super nice. I don't need an ATC. I would just um, not block and use this, or whatever, if I had to two-strand it. So Grigri is amazing, and that's why I only take one ascender, because I can ascender in Grigri, worst case scenario, if I have to ascend something. And I have my water in the back, and this is just like Jeremiah's, because that is his. Now, here is my emergency kit. Uh, duct tape on a string, pretty good. I actually like the duct tape, duct tape on the water bottle because this is kind of hard to unroll and this is uh, more accessible. I always have that with me. The next thing is I have a VT Prusik because I can do a lot with it. I can even go down a strand that's already tensioned up or down it. And then I have my knife. And so this just goes in the back. I always have it with me. I don't feel like I need two ascenders a Grigri, a micro traction, mini traction, and a three to one backup system. Uh, Jeremiah's gonna show you all of his systems when we get into hauling and why he does that. And it's really great that we don't agree. And it's really great if you don't, respectfully. And you can actually do what we're doing right now and we will post it on the How Not To Big Wall Bible. We'll put it on our How Not To Clips channel and then we can link to that video and we can get a lot of people's what's on your rack. Let me talk to you about my tail. This is a two millimeter cord that if a haul bag becomes undocked off the wall and starts to fall while I'm on lead, in theory, this should break before I do. This actually killed somebody and the bag came off. They were attached with a 10 mil rope attached to a bomber haul loop. And uh, I think it broke their back. So um, I find I'd rather have that thing break and fail instead of me trying to hold it up. This is not gonna, um, this has never failed on me. Yours, you have to do the same thing, yeah. It's always good to carry a couple extra pounds with you so you can burn them off while you're up there. No, um, I have some beaks and hooks in this bag. This bag is loosely connected, or not loosely, I mean, it's just connected, but there's not connected to my gear, which is super cool. Uh, beaks are just notorious for catching on everything and it really, really sucks. I have some copper heads. I can even put my other hooks in here. This was kind of a little hack that we kind, kind of did on our last wall. And because I'm only going to use this for part of my climb, it's on a separate sling. Now, you never want to put that sling on top of these. You wanna either take these off or go like this and get it over it. You don't wanna put a jacket on while these are over your shoulder. You wanna make sure the jacket's on and then you put this back on or you're not gonna get them off. And so this other side is my hammer and you can make this thing as long as you want because it just goes in a hole, it's very simple, with a screw that screws into the webbing. For me, this is a little too short. It would catch on my foot. So I adjusted mine to hang about that much lower than my foot, but I can pull it up just as easy and you actually don't use this very often in a wall. So if you're watching this and you're new, Unless you're gonna jump on A3 as your first wall, um, you're probably not gonna be using this for a while. Hammers make the piton scars worse. And if people aren't using hammers, don't use hammers. Yeah, good time to bring that up. If I had a sling for every person who says they hate doing it this way, I'd have more slings. Um, you have to find the one that's on the outside. So in this case, it would be that guy. It doesn't take me that long to figure it out. I'm used to it. And I like having my carabiner on the end. I clip my piece clip my rope and they're versatile. I can use them as anchor material. I can use them as whatever. Uh, I can use the lasso. But you can see because in my context, in my viewpoint, in the way I do things, why this ends up being like here. I don't want these doubled up or draws. I don't have space for a lot of draws. So they work really good right here for me. If you're not paying attention and you just grab, grab one, it's gonna really suck and you're gonna hate it, and you're gonna think that I was wrong, and you're gonna be cursing my name, because you don't know if you're not doing it right. Just, gosh, that does suck. <laughs> Grab the beaner. There we go. Nothing else is around it. Voila! Helmet. Uh, rocks fall, things fall, people fall, or you could do a flipper whipper and smash your head against the wall. Bring a helmet. My headlamp is on my helmet because I gonna, uh, because that's a good idea. 
If I had a headlamp for every epic I've had, I'd have more headlamps than I need. But um, a lot of my epics came from not having light. And once they started caving and they take light very serious, you're like, oh, if I just take it a little bit more serious, maybe I won't have so many epics. So I have a really good headlamp, stays on my helmet all the time. I even have a spare battery in my pocket, even though this is a fresh battery. Had one of our friends run out of light in the middle of a lead and it took him three hours to finish by braille. So I also have another spare headlamp for redundancy in my personal bag. And so at night, if I decide to take this off, which I choose to sleep without a helmet because my face is facing up, so it's your time to go, um, then I have a, a headlamp for that as well. Let's find out uh, how heavy this is. Because I've always been curious how much weight is actually on me, including my harness. And that is 36 and a half pounds. Uh, I... That, that is what you're loading up. Wow, is that so heavy when you actually... So I'm at 36 and a half pounds for everything you just saw me show you. I always thought it was more. It feels like a lot more than 30 hanging here. <laughs> and it's crazy how low it hangs. Let's find out what racks you guys have and how much they weigh, and we can add those to the Big Wall Bible. Just check out how to submit that stuff in the Big Wall Bible itself.